Hey all, it's Nim or Nim McCree if you're feeling professional, and welcome to the YouTube video. Now today, we're going to be going over patch notes for Sword of Legends Online. New raids, new content, and a few other changes that are rolling out now. That being said, if you like this type of content, or me in general, why not click subscribe and click that notification bell to stay up to date with everything the channel does. Additionally, you can find me on Twitch every Wednesday and Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash and finally, there will be a list of patrons scrolling across the screen. Thank you to them. If you'd like to join them, you can join at patreon.com slash nimicry. But without further ado, let's talk patch notes, what they mean for you, and what I think is going to happen and how things are going to shake out. Okay, so these patch notes are live as of today. So let's find out what we got here. So first, of course, patch notes, next round of hard raid. The remaining two hard raids, Ice World and Ruins of Nuo, will be added on October 14th with patch 1.0.14. Together with this patch, we're starting to get in the Halloween mood with a variety of new shop offers and Battle Pass Season 3. Look out for more details in separate news. Now, something I want to mention about Battle Pass, the Battle Pass tends to last for about 28 days. So, $10 a piece. If that's value for money for you, if you like the cosmetics, remember, the only the premium content is cosmetics. If you want to get any gear from it, that is in the free tier, which is better than some Battle Passes from other companies. I generally don't find it worthy. Of it, the summer one I bought, and I don't really like any of these cosmetics. But, again, that's going to be a person-by-person -person basis. I want to let you guys know what you're working with and how it's going to be. Also, every time the new Battle Pass comes around, we do have a bit of RMT that happens where people will buy Battle Pass for gold. The problem is, the only way you can buy the Battle Pass for gold is if somebody gives it to you, and it's too easy to abuse that system where people will give money or gold, and, and it's, it's a way of to launder dirty gold and keep yourself up and up and up in terms of the gold rankings. Also, if you have enough gold, you can manipulate the economy, which certain people in my comments section have done. So, keep that in mind. Anyways, Ice World, the entrance fellow portal for, to the raid members on the Bashan Plateau, right at the Rain Prayer platform. So the hard unlocks Thursday, October 14th at 12 server time. Can receive loot once per boss per week. Resets Thursday at 6 p.m. server time. Recommended item level 80. Drops level 90 gear, PvE Seal Stones 3, Weapon bracing, weapon and Bracer Talisman, level 2 recipes, Exquisite Fairy Tofu, and new pet-related materials. Matchmaking, you can only enter the dungeon manually. No automatic matchmaking is available. Okay, perfect. Makes sense. We've seen it before. We'll see it again. That's what happens with hard raids. You've got to manually form your, form your groups. Uh, easier modes, you can do an automatic matchmaking because that's meant to be knocked down. Honestly, go in with a guild, have fun, knock it down. It'd be easy. And then, of course, the Ruins of Nuo. Bring 10 to 20 players into the Shanghua Grassland and confront the Plague Bringer anew. Talk to the Ruins of Nuo tutor Ji Hongshao near the entrance of the Raging River Ruins to get access to a special zone containing the entrance teleport. The heart, of course, again, unlocks on Thursday, October 14th at 12 server time. You can receive loot once per boss per week. Resets Thursday at 6. Recommended item level is 80. Drops level 90 gear. PV Seal Stones 3. Weapon Embracer, Talisman, Level 2 Recipes, Exquisite Squirrel Mandarin Fish, and new pet-related materials. Again, the matchmaking. You're only able to enter the dungeon manually. No automatic matchmaking is available. So both of the raids have their practice modes, their normal modes, and their hard modes. I think eventually they're going to bring out extreme rating. I haven't seen that yet, but I can only assume because there are, dungeon-wise, there's your drill, normal, hard, and extreme. So I can only imagine that they'll do that same model with raids. Especially as we know that they made a change early on where you can actually go back into the raids. You used to not be able to do that. You'd get the Jade Helper Scroll, and it cost a lot of mentor points. The problem with mentor points is what happens when new players stop playing, right? Eventually, your, your, your population of a game is going to dip. And if your ability to access content is limited by helping new players, you've created a close and, more importantly, a spiraling down system. It's bad. So they changed that, which was very, very good. Now, people tell me this game is out in China, and I, I believe that, and that it, out in China it's about four years ahead, and so maybe they already did that, or maybe because of the outcry from players, they decided to push the Western change a little sooner. I don't know. I don't keep up with the Chinese version of it, because, quite frankly, I, I don't care to keep up with the Chinese version of it. I have enough to keep up with everything that I do and covering patch notes as I can to help you guys. And of course, again, the squirrel mandarin fish and fairy tofu, get the recipe, farm the mats, make the money. And then, of course, once you have the recipe, give it to a guildmate. 
you get another one. Or sell it on the Dragon Star Auction. Uh, the, now, that being said, the Dragon Star Auction House generally is run by a couple of different uh, auction house barons and syndicates. So keep that in mind, you may not make a whole lot of money, but it's always good to help other people out. And the more players that have access to higher level resources, the higher a chance you have that you're going to finish the dungeon, the raid, the content easily and without problem. So keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes playing a little bit of gold up front can help you down the road. And by paying, I mean you're just sacrificing a little bit of gold. Now, the arena, PvP season. Please note that below the following changes will accelerate progression through the various PvP systems and ranking. This is due to the current PvP season being scheduled to end on November 11th. There remain it. After this, it's still possible to enter the various PvP activities, though they will be sent to in training mode, ranking or matchmaking points gained, until the next starts. That's details for the next season for its start expected later in November. In the Garden of Blades, uh, players of rating 23 or below will be granted more rating points upon winning to allow players to catch up to higher ratings before the end of the current season within November. Uh, so what that, that right there to me sell, tells me that in November, you're going to get a bonus if you're below 2300. If you're not 2300, it, or uh, if, you're not 20, if you're below 2300 now, it doesn't matter. You're, not, you're just going to gain the amount of points. And then, of course, if you're above 2300, you're pretty good. So they're going to be like, hey, you, you don't need any more points. You'll, you'll, you'll earn them the hard way. Battle of the Continent. Players reaching 2400 Combat Spirit will, currently below the rank of Crimson Moonlight 3, reach this rank after the next weekly recalculation, Thursdays with server maintenance, even if they usually require multiple weeks or more points to reach this. Now, that's very nice. I like that they have, they're kind of normalizing the rank. That makes me happy because here's the thing. A lot of people I know who play PvP, who do this stuff, they always want to, they want to hit their metric, hit their number, hit their goals, hit their things, have their bragging after. And honestly, if you're throwing down in the arena, why not brag? Same thing with your high-end raiders. Hey, we take down that boss every week. We just look at it and be like, all right, I'm a berserker, big sword, swing, swing. Ooh, ooh. Or uh, more accurately, you bard and be like, I play music. Fire. All right, and of course, miscellaneous, the Jade Helper Scroll. Added an additional milestone at 1,000 scroll points for a third mentor reward. Additionally, updated the content of mid-sized group instance normal, so it allows up to eight clears, or only three per week, and also considers the four one-boss raids, till now only Jeanju Palace counted. Okay, so that's going to be a slight change to what I would normally like, which is the fact that it considers the four one-person boss raid. Uh, so that's, or one-boss raids. That's a problem, because before you can just help people and help people and help people. Now it's counting. That's a, that's a problem. I may have that backwards, but based on the text, it seems that they're going to now, those are now going to count uh, against the eight clears. Uh, the battle pass. Battle pass for season two will end with this patch release. Season three will start uh, after the maintenance and will require the unlocking of a new voucher. Uh, further details will be provided in a separate announcement. Uh, of course, the battle pass will be $10 again, US. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, and then, of course, the NVIDIA DLSS. Uh, with the patch on October 14th, we will add a new version of NVIDIA's DLSS to the game, upgrading this functionality from an older 1.2.14 version to the newest 2.33. Owners of the NVIDIA RTX GPU can now fine-tune their experience in Solo with more detail. Instead of only turning DLSS on or off in the settings, now allow for the following states. Off, auto, quality, translated in current client. Interesting. Balanced performance, not translated in current client, and super performance, not translated in current client. Now, when they say not translated, I assume not translated into Chinese, but it could be not translated into actual functionality. Uh, translation in the sense meaning uh, implementation. This announcement was announced by NVIDIA, their latest driver update, October 12th, and we will recommend installing the latest drivers to take full advantage of version 496.13. We do have some bug fixes. Fix the issue where Noble Hero PvE Box 75 was included as a reward in the specified weekly quests, Land of Emerald Clouds, Destruction, the item Tao Appreciation Basic, Tao Appreciation Basic, more accurately, will now be received at the beginning of the tutorial quest where it was re will be required, not at the end of the previous tutorial step. This should help in avoiding consumption of the potion before the required quest step has gotten started. Crafted item Level 90 Gear is now available in the Combination Tool. Okay, so so far this actually like, not a bad patch, right? You get new content, you get new paid content, which is cosmetics. Again, remember, all gear rewards come from the free tier. So no matter what you do, as long as you do the battle pass, you can get gear. If you want to look pretty, believe me, Solo has many options for you to look pretty. 
All you got to do is go with the battle pack. The NVIDIA DLSS is an interesting thing. Uh, they were talking about at some point, I think in 2022, adding Unreal Engine 4 support to Solo, which is fine. I do know some people with some higher-end graphics cards tend to have a little trouble lagging, and that's due to the framework of the game. I know I had some trouble in raids, and I had to turn things off, but I had a commenter in the channel said he had a 1050 and didn't have any trouble at all. I don't know if he was in raid at the time, but that's one of those things, because I know like when I'm out, when I was in the Berserker class hall, it was fine. When I was in Cloud Rise, it was fine. But when I had eight people, eight, ten, fifteen people in a raid, we had a problem. I'd turn off stuff. There's a lot of things going on. Of course, bug fixes are always always helpful, and especially with the DAO appreciate or the DAO appreciation basic. So we've got that. Yeah, this is a good note. It's a good thing. You know, while Sword of Legends has tapered off a little bit, and I don't personally enjoy it as much as I used to. It is always good to see that they're still adding, still updating, and haven't actually bailed out on it. I had friends tell me that, oh, they'll give up within a month. And I was like, ah, not a month. They can't give up with it. And I'm glad to see that I was right. Now, that being said, guys, if you enjoyed this video, why not leave a like below or a comment? You can also subscribe and click that notification bell to stay up to date with everything on the channel. I stream on Twitch Wednesdays and Sundays right now at twitch.tv slash nimicry at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can connect with me at Twitter, on, on Twitter, at nimicry. That's N-I-M-I-C-R-Y. For those who are truly immortal heroes, there is the Patreon. That's patreon.com slash nimicry. Outside of that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much, and have a good day. See ya the next one.